this webinar, you meet Kate and her daughter, Dani, in their first therapy session with Dr. Salzman, which takes place one year after the sudden and traumatic loss of their husband and father. It is very clear to me that things are not fine. You're a completely different person. You were so incredibly rude to me. You slam doors. You don't do your homework. I get an email that you haven't done your homework in weeks, that you're not showing up to classes. None of that is fine. It's not in this house. That no, is not fine. It's fine. It's you're overreacting. It's really not that I'm bad. I'm not overreacting. You cannot fail out of school. You cannot throw your life away no, because you are feeling happening. sad. That is no, not that's, fine. That's not what's happening. I'm fine, mom. You're obviously not. She can't take any responsibility for these things that are going on with her right now. And that's why we're here. You need to start to learn to take control over your life. Wait, that, take responsibility wait, for what's going on. But is that really why we're here? Or are we here, are we here because you're pretending things are fine even though dad's gone? Tell well, him why we're here. Let, let me just jump in here a sec. You know, I, I wanted to see things go a little bit to get a sense of how you guys might be getting stuck. I mean, is what you just did, is this familiar? to you? I mean, does, does it go like this at, at home? Yeah, yeah, it does. I'd say it's worse. Hmm. I'd say you're holding back. It's worse at home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was a little bit what you, you mentioned on the phone as well, that you guys really been getting into some serious head bumping. I can't even believe the language she uses towards me, the way that she talks to me. Right back at you. Okay. I, don't, I don't think Danny. you're being fair either. Danny. Okay, let, let me, let's slow it down a little bit because there's a lot going on here. My sense is that you don't like where you guys are ending up right now. This, this doesn't feel good to you, is that, Danny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not good. So Woody, I'm wondering, well, let me check in with you first, Kate. So when you're, uh, it, it sounds like you're, you're, you're very concerned about Danny, and that's why, you know, you, you, you wanted you both to be here. You're concerned about what's going on between the both of you. You're also concerned about school as well. What is the, the main thing that you're after here, you know, in terms of when you're, when you're talking with, with Danny, what, what, what is your hope? I just feel like she's losing control and she's turning into a completely different person who I barely recognize. I don't know how to talk to her. I don't know how to help her through this. I don't know how to convince her that school is worth her time, that, that, that she needs to treat our relationship with more respect. I don't know how to get through to her with any of this, but I'm worried she's just losing sight. So let me make sure I got this because it's important. So you're feeling like you're losing touch with, with Danny, like you said, you don't recognize her, but also, I guess, that sense of distance from her, that you're, you're not feeling close to her, especially at this difficult time in your, in your lives. And so one of the ways that you're working with that is to try to, you know, you're checking in with her and being very worried and, I don't know, if it comes across as, as your mom being critical or demanding from you, am I getting that right? Mm hmm Okay. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to get you to do basic things, Danny. I'm just trying to get you to get yourself through the day. Okay. So when you try to get her through the day and, and you have these expectations for her and she doesn't meet them, what goes on for you? <sighs> I get very frustrated uh, and I get very, I get angry. Um, I feel worried because things are spiraling out of control a little bit. So, so Danny, does that sound right? So when you see your mom is like checking in with you or she gets angry with you, how does that land on you or what does it feel like for you? Well, I don't know why I don't know why she needs to constantly be asking me to do these things. I probably would do them if she wasn't on my case on it, about it all the time. Huh. Okay, 
So then what do you do when you feel like she's on your case so much and she's angry and she's being maybe critical and frustrated with you? So what do you end up doing? Well, you, you know, usually it turns into a bigger fight at, um, after a while. And eventually I just leave. I go and into my room or something because I don't feel like I know what the point of fighting with her is because it's always going to end up the same way. Does, does that sound right, Kate, that you guys can, can blow up bigger and then Danny ends up taking herself out or, you know, just leaving? Mm hmm Okay. And I'm wondering when she does that, what, what's that like for you? What does that leave you with? With nothing. She won't engage with me. Hmm. She won't tell me why she won't do these things. She won't tell me why this is going on, what's going on. She just gets angry and leaves. Okay, so you feel like you're left, you're left with nothing, that you, you don't know what's going on with her, and you're, you're worried, you have fears that things might not be good for her. Am I getting that right? Does that sound right? Okay, and Danny, when you go off on your own, you know, because you, my guess is you, you, you feel kind of hopeless as we're going to do the same thing again. I kind of feel like I have to go on my own because it's not too different from what it's like all the time. I mean, like I said, you pretend everything's fine. Like, you, you always look on the bright side, but what if there's not a bright side? I'm just trying to keep things on track, Danny. I'm just trying to keep us going. But sometimes we can't be on we can't be on the tracks all the time. We can't just stay on the tracks. It's going to go off the rails and you just have to be fine with that. You can't just let everything fall apart. Okay, I don't really know if I'm making any sense, but it's it's you can't be in order all the time. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Of course I understand that. Yeah, right. Okay. So, so this is important stuff that, that you're saying. And you said earlier on, Danny, you said you feel that your mom kind of pretends things are okay or, and, or she doesn't hook in with the fact that, that things don't feel okay with you, that, you know, that you've, you've taken a big hit with, you know, loss of your dad and the move. I mean, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. What I hear from you, Kate, is that you, you're very hungry for, to learn about Danny, what's going on with her, and for her to be able to share this kind of stuff with you. But I'm also hearing from Danny that it's not so easy and doesn't feel like the right, you know, like, like that you, don't, you might not want to hear this stuff or it's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. What makes it hard, Danny? for you to, you know, share this kind of stuff or, you know, even tough feelings that you're having. What makes it hard for you to bring that to your mom? I mean, when dad died, I, I would try to talk about it with you and you just say we have to keep going on and stay on the tracks and, you know, I want, I want to talk to you, but I don't think I can. I don't feel like we have that kind of relationship. So, tell me if I got this right. It doesn't feel safe for you to talk about some of these things with your mom. That you haven't, that's not part of the way you have talked. Kate, what's it like for you to hear Danny share that? Hurtful. Um. You don't feel safe to talk to me? Not really, no. I don't really know what to do with that. So it, it, it hurts you. You, you. you want her to be able to, to bring these things to, to you, to talk about these things. But sometimes you get caught in this, you're, you're worried about, you know, how are things going and, you know, your frustration. You want so much good for her that sometimes it, it's received by 
Danny, when you know you become frustrated and angry, that it's, I can't do that. I can't talk to my mom like that. I, I just want to enter one additional thing, which is that you, she's lost one parent, and you're it. But you are so important, so that when she feels that she can't talk to you, that's a very alone place for her to be. But it sounds like you would like Danny to be able to get to share even these things that, you know, even when things are not going well. Do, let's say if you did share something that was kind of, that you were sad about or wasn't going so well, what kind of reaction would be helpful to you or help you to feel safer to do that? Maybe just don't pretend that everything's fine. For, for once, let me don't see the bright side. Just, just, just try to understand or show that you understand. Of course I understand. I may not show things the same way as you. That doesn't mean I don't understand. Okay. I think it's, it's clear that you, you want to be there for Danny. I'm trying to think of ways that you can respond to her in ways that communicate to her that you do understand. Danny, do you have some ideas? I mean, I, were you saying that for her, instead of trying to like fix things up or to put the bright side on it, just to, to be able to, yeah, just to sit with it or just to go, yeah, things are shitty. Does that capture that? Mm -hmm. But I worry about that because I feel like that's what's getting everything so off track. I don't think so. I feel like if you can't keep yourself going, you start to lose sight of what's important, of goals, of what you need to do to get through the day. So I worry about that. Does that make sense to you, Danny? That your mom worries about the practical things or, you know, getting ahead and Kind of, but not really. I mean, I feel like for you, everything's just trying to get to the next place and trying to get there as fast as you can. I don't want to go so fast to the next place. What if we can, can't we just stay for a while without being pushed somewhere else? I don't always feel like I can. Right, right. I think that's honest. I think that's right. I think you've got so much on your plate, Kate. You're, you've got to keep all these plates spinning, you know. You, you're having to pick up, you know, what, what Jim would have done with this financially. You feel that you have to move this family, the two of you, forward, and it's such a, and sometimes maybe even a crushing weight. You're, you're taking care of business in these important ways and practical ways, but that often results in you missing out on you know, creating this, the place that Danny can come to you. But I know you deeply and want to have that, that link with Danny and to do this together with her. What, what are some of the things that, well, Danny, you mentioned some things that maybe you guys don't talk about. What, what comes to mind? Things that maybe aren't all happy or, you know, everything's going great. We don't, we don't talk about what, what happened. We don't talk about dad. You know, I just, 
sometimes I wonder, like, do you even miss him? Because you don't show it. Of course I miss him. Okay. Well, I just, I wish we could talk about it more. And, and like I said, the bright side, it's not. I don't see it, but you, you're seeing it. I'm, So, Kate, it, it kind of, on one part of you, it kind of hurts you for, to hear Danny say that you, you're not showing that you, you, you miss Jim. But on the other part, you're saying, hey, we've got to keep it together. At least I have to keep it together. We can't wallow in this. So you don't allow yourself to go into those hard places. Sure. Danny, it sounds like you, you get it. You, you go into some of those sad places in which you think about your dad. Yeah. Are there any specific times that come to mind that get kind of triggered to go, oh yeah, I used to do this with my dad or? Um, a lot of times it's in the morning when mm. Uh, he, he used to wake up really early and go out to the garden. He would work on the flowers and, you know, sometimes I would help him, sometimes I just watch through a window. But now nothing, nothing's there, nothing grows there. It's just barren and sad. So when you look out the window or early in the morning, you go, wow. It's, well, that was my time with my dad and it reminds you that he's gone. What do you what do you do with that? With those with those feelings? I, mean, I, don't, I don't really know what to do with them. So don't really do anything. Do you end up do you talk to anyone or you go off by yourself or No, I don't talk to anyone. You don't talk. I don't feel like I can talk to anyone. What, what are you hearing here? What, how is this landing on you? It, it, it hurts that you don't feel like, that she doesn't feel like she can talk to me. And I know that you and your dad were really close. But you can talk to me too. Can I? Of course you can. <sighs> Wish I knew that before. What makes it hard sometimes, even when you get to that kind of dark place? It makes it hard. What makes it hard for you to talk to your mom? Share that. I don't, I don't really know what to, what to say or how to describe it because it's, she's not showing what she's feeling about it, so I don't have anything to show me what to do. I'm just trying to keep things normal as much as possible. We've been through a lot of changes. Maybe we need to figure out what what our life is now. I miss him too. So much. I know. Good. But I think that you and I need to figure out how we move on from here. <sighs> Danny, what's it? like to hear your mom share that she her her heart breaks too when she thinks of your dad and she's trying to hold it together but she's also wants to find a way to move forward with you and she isn't sure how to do it I 
I don't know, I just... Maybe I'm not alone anymore. I don't want to be. I hope that's what's happening. I'm wondering, first, I think it's really important what you guys have been sharing. And it seems like it's different from what you usually do. Right. It feels for you, it felt like I'm not so alone. I don't have to, you know, go off by myself. How is it, how does it feel different to you, Kate? Yeah, it feels like, like we're together a little bit, like we're talking a little bit. That's different. Danny, how would it be if you and your mom did find sometimes to talk, to maybe share memories about dad or you know, even things that happened during the day that brought him back to mind. That might be good. We can try that. I think this is, this is what I call courage, what I'm seeing here in front of me. You guys are stepping out of the way you usually do things. And you're trying something very different. And takes you to a different place. Uh, during this next week, I'm wondering if you can both maybe even think of for yourselves maybe one specific time in which you're reminded of your dad or Jim, and then when he comes to mind, and when you do get some of those feelings, that instead of kind of going off and doing your own thing or, or, or pushing it down like, oh, you know, I can't feel that way, I wonder if you can find an opportunity just to check in with each other in some way. Does, what do you think? You can try it. Sure, yeah, I can try that. to get to was I know there's been some hard things going on between them, uh, real, some conflict. My hope was that we could, you know, I could validate both of their positions, but also give voice to some of those more vulnerable feelings underneath that would enable them to hear each other and maybe to not get stuck in a usual kind of pattern of, you know, a fighting pattern, but to start to hear some of the, the softer stuff. There was a number of times in the session when I felt that Kate did shift to a softer place. You know, first she came in and she was, in fact, I was kind of like, oh, are we going to be able to do this? Because she seemed so kind of uh, positioned in this kind of defensive, angry thing. But uh, I think especially when she could see kind of the pain or the loneliness of Danny, that softened her. That enabled her to drop down and to let go of something like, oh, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. So there's a couple of times when Danny was able to share her vulnerability, that's what kind of, you know, enabled her to put that stuff aside. What I was hoping to accomplish with the homework was to provide an opportunity for them to continue to make small strides down this road that we had just kind of opened up a little bit. So we made some, you know, I think it was an important first step in which they're gonna start to either question or let go of their kind of habitual ways of dealing with their, their sad and painful feelings. But so we wanna hold on to that. We don't wanna wait till next week that can disappear as they get pulled back into their regular stuff. 
So it's very important to we have some ongoing work that can reinforce this and maybe even deepen it. And so my hope was just that they can continue to walk, take another little step down the road, and ideally and most importantly for them to experience success with that and hopefully a little bit deepening in their relationship to further prime this pump so that we can continue down the road. One moment from the session that I will remember that actually kind of touched my heart was when uh, Danny was talking about, you know, when I was inquiring with her, what does she do with those feelings when she is reminded of her dad? And then she said, I don't do anything. I just kind of go off on my own. And then it hit me, and, said, and, I, and I said, I said, that, that's hard. That is hard. And I thought that was important for mom to hear too. That's another piece that I think for her to hear that. And it helped that, but it touched my heart as well. After a, a year had gone by, things didn't really seem like they were getting better. They seemed like they were getting worse with Danny, with her experiences in school, with her attitude with our relationship. So I felt like it was time to get some help. I was feeling scared that I was losing Danny. Uh, she's, she just has become a very different person than the kid that I knew how to parent. Uh, and that was feeling very scary to me. I thought Dr. Saltzman had a good way of speaking and listening to both of us. Um, he seemed to understand how to open her up better than I do. And that was helpful. And I think that was good for both of us. So I think that it felt like he was on both of our sides in that moment because that's what we needed. I will try to let Dr. Saltzman support me in this as well. It was clear in the session that Danny needs me to be a little more available in different ways than I know how to be. Uh, so I will try to do that for her. When Dr. Saltzman said that Danny's lost her father and that I was the parent she had left, I felt, I felt really awful um, because I think that I can see and I know that she can see that we don't have the same relationship that she had with her father. and. That makes me feel bad in a lot of different ways. Um, and to voice that, and to voice that, that that relationship that I don't think is very strong right now is so vital was uh, just brought up a lot for me. Well, he gave us space, and he also stepped in. And I think he had a really good sense of when to do that. Um, there were moments in the session where I could feel Danny and me sort of just fighting and getting into similar fights that we do at home. Um, and at home we don't have anybody to step in and, and help us cool down or take a look at what's going on. And as sort of difficult as it is in those moments for someone to even be seeing that, it was helpful. My first impression of Dr. Salzman was kind of that he was a stranger and I didn't know why I would be telling these things to a stranger and I didn't know whether or not he was on my side. Uh, I thought maybe since he talked to my mom before that he would be on her side but then a little while later I got the sense he was neutral. I'm not really sure why mom wouldn't talk to me about dad but I, I think it's probably because she didn't want to have to deal with her emotions, so she kind of pushed it away and didn't want to talk about it. The hardest moment for me was probably seeing my mom cry, because that doesn't happen a lot. It was hard to see. Well, when, when he said that, the, um, that I only had one more parent, it really hit me again because I, he's right, I only have one more parent and I don't want to lose her too.